Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at some portrait retouching techniques in Luminar Neo. So this is the image I'm going to edit today. Now it's slightly underexposed. So the first thing I will do is go into the essentials tab here under develop. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the exposure up probably to about 0.34 and I'm going to boost the shadows ever so slightly to get more details out of the hair here. For the highlights, I'll bring it down to about, let's say 20. Now in the past, I would zoom in here and work on the blemishes, but I found working with Neo that I'm going to do that after the fact, and I'll show you why. Next, we're going to head over to the portrait section here. So let's close essentials, open up portrait and go into skin AI. Once it loads, I'm going to zoom in so I can focus on the face area. At this point, I'm going to take the amount slider, put it about halfway at about 50. For shine removal, I tend to use this a little bit as well. It'll take care of these really strong highlights, especially on the nose here. So again, I like to bring it at about 50%. If we do a quick before and after, you really start to see that Neo has done most of the work. Now, since there's no clone in stamp tool, we're going to use the eraser tool to do the touch-ups. And this is the main reason why I do it after applying Skin AI, because it does kind of smoothen out those blemishes. And then now I can work on the problem areas. If I started prior to applying Skin AI, I would probably end up doing more work than I need to. Remember, you gotta work smarter, not harder. So I always like to take a step back and see where I can visually see these minor blemishes. So I'll zoom in and I'll decrease my brush size and go over these spots where I think need some touch-ups. So this is the first run I'm going to click on erase. It'll take a few seconds and then you're going to see that it'll remove the blemishes pretty well and blend them into the face. So if I do a quick before and after, see here, then we'll do an overall before and after. Now let's back up a bit here. Let's do a before and after. And you already see that it's made such a difference and I really haven't done much work. There are still a few areas here that we can blend in a bit more. So I'm going to go ahead back into the racer tool and focus on these areas. Okay. Once again, let's do another before and after it's already done such an amazing job. We've kind of evened out the skin, removed those minor blemishes. I'm actually quite happy with the results here. So I'm going to go back into my edits tab here and go back where we apply the skin AI. I am going to boost it to about 75 and then see how that looks. Since I've applied it a bit more, it has evened out skin a bit more and it doesn't look too fake. We can still see texture in the skin, which is great. If we wanted to see more texture in the skin, we can always go to our details tab and play around with either the small or medium details. If I crank this to the right, it's heavily sharpening the details there, right? So we want to apply enough where you start to see the pores of the skin. 22 seems okay. Let's bring it down a little bit. Yeah, I think that works. If we do a before and after, it just gives a bit more definition to the pores of the skin. Now what I'd like to do is work on the eyes and the lips and everything else. Let's go back into face AI. Now for this picture, I'm not going to use face light, but you could to brighten the face if you wanted to or slim face. If you bring that up, you see that it makes her face a bit more narrow. So we're going to head into the eye section. This is probably one of the features I absolutely love. It's so easy to use and very useful. Under the drop down here, you're going to get different colors. I'm going to pick brown here to bring out the brown in Riza's eyes here, but you see that it's a little bit too intense for me. So I'm going to bring the visibility down maybe to about say 15 where it shows a little bit. If we zoom in here, I'm going to bring in iris flare 
all the way up and you see the undersides of her eyes here that's what the iris flare does it kind of gives you a bit more of that catch light in the eyes if i wanted to enlarge in the eyes here i can do that here but i won't use this eye whitening pretty straightforward if you look at the white of her eyes we can crank that if we wanted to i'm just going to use a little bit of it and the eye enhancer, I love this tool. If I bring it to about 32, it gives it kind of that glossy, glassy look. And I really love that look. So I'm going to keep it at about 33. It also has red eye removal if you have red eyes in your pictures. Dark circles removal will lighten up the dark spots under the eyes. Now you could do this manually too with a dodge and burn tool if we had it. Or you can use masks. So we'll use this tool for now. And improve eyebrows will just make the eyebrows more bold and darker depending on the hair color. And there you go. So if we do a quick before and after and we focus on the eyes there what a difference that makes really makes the eyes pop out next we're going to look at the mouth lip saturation we'll just saturate the lips so if i bring this all the way up you see how red her lips get let's keep it at about 30. you can make it more red if i wanted to we'll enhance it a little bit here darkening of the lips i'm going to leave teeth whitening pretty obvious it whitens the teeth we'll use a little bit of that now let's do another before and after now quite the difference, as you can tell from the original, again, no foundation was used, a little bit of makeup. With Neo, you can get that nice, smooth, glamour look with very little effort. The last thing we're going to look at are all these stray hair. Now instead of erasing them or doing a whole convoluted process, here's a little bit of a hack. Now what I'll do is duplicate this layer, so I'm just going to hit D, and then we're going to go into our layers properties here, click on masking and mask AI. We'll let it do its thing. And then I'm going to select human so that we can see the mask. You'll notice on the left here, we have to adjust the mask here and also on the right side here. So we're going to go back into the brush tool, make sure we can see the mask, click on erase, and we're going to delete the mask from this area. When you're removing the mask though from like little hairs, I'd encourage you to use a lower strength. 50, 30 to 50 is usually pretty good. Decrease your brush size and gently go on the outside of the hair and the outside of the circle, like on the edge. And just work your way towards it so that you can carefully work on this selection. If I were to hide the bottom layer, you're going to see that the background's completely gone. You still see the little hairs there a little bit, but let's show this layer. One way we can deal with the stray hairs here to go under structure and bring the amount all the way to minus 100. And as I zoom in here and let's do a before and after, look at the stray hairs around the head here. If we do an after, they're magically gone. Now you see a little bit here, but no big deal. You can repeat this process to smoothen out around the hair a bit more, or you could do the same thing in details and bring the details down. Because really you're just working on the background image as opposed to the layer on top. Now the other good thing about doing this little hack is that I can go into color. Make sure you select the bottom layer. We can go into color, HSL, and we could change the background. There we go. I kind of like this photo with a bluish background or even a purple, but I have the option to change the color now. And there you have it. Pretty simple, right? Now typically I would love to have a healing brush, you know, a patch tool all the retouching tools that I'm used to in Affinity Photo or Photoshop. But I think Luminar Neal's goal is to avoid using those tools and just use the sliders to make it easier for you. With this type of editing, it's really important to understand how to manage your color as well. So I encourage you to check out this video on HSL and this video on using your histogram. Until the next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.